Hi everybody, we've done it for fiscal policy, now we need to do it for monetary policy. Again, a major hot topic area for paper two this year. We need to make sure we know the themes, we know the context linked to the UK economy because if this question comes up, it's very likely to be themed to events in the UK economy. Now, the two contexts, the two themes are very similar to fiscal policy. First, what we saw during the COVID crisis and now what we're doing with monetary policy. So let's dive in, going back to COVID times, like with fiscal policy, monetary policy was heavily expansionary. The Bank of England, the Monetary Policy Committee within the Bank of England cut interest rates all the way down to 0.1%. That is the lowest level in the history of the Bank of England. Bear in mind, the Bank of England has existed since the 1600s. We've never seen interest rates as low as this before. But note that interest rates were already very low prior to the COVID crisis. So the cut wasn't that significant. So the Bank of England, in their mind, wanted to go further. They wanted further stimulus. They couldn't use interest rates anymore. So in their mind, they had to use quantitative easing. They pumped 450 billion pounds worth of new money into the UK economy via QE, bringing our total to 895 billion. Um, bear in mind, that is 20% of GDP. This is a huge injection of money into the economy. So both policies, highly expansionary in nature. And why? Well, for the core purposes you've learned in the classroom, simply to increase aggregate demand, to fight against recession. Uh, the COVID recession was our worst recession in the UK for over 300 years. So yeah, try and increase AD, close a massive negative output gap, uh, promote economic recovery. Um, during the COVID crisis, deflation was a major concern. So try and fight against that, increase inflation. Uh, if AD goes up, that is, to keep unemployment low or prevent it spiking, to try and boost growth rates. Uh, it's been a while since these policies have been used, so we can assess them. Um, we saw pretty strong recovery in the UK, 2021, uh, 2022, decently high growth rates, around 7% growth in 2021, 4% growth in 2022, one of the strongest recoveries in the world actually in the UK. You could argue together with expansionary fiscal policy, these policies had a part to play in that. We know unemployment didn't spike too badly during the COVID crisis. 5.4% uh, spike in unemployment is not as bad as it could have been. Again, you could argue these policies had a role to play and we didn't get deflation. Uh, we got close to it, but we didn't actually get there. So you could argue relative success, but where are we now? We are seeing the huge trade-off as a result of these policies, in particular because of the huge quantitative easing that we saw, the rampant inflation that we are now battling, stubbornly high rates of inflation peaking at way past 10%. We are still battling these high, high inflation numbers. And the irony is very strong, isn't it? How the Monetary Policy Committee within the Bank of England has a core mandate of using monetary policy to hit our inflation target, keep inflation low and stable at 2%. Yet you could argue that their policies, in particular quantitative easing, sowed the seeds of significant inflation in the UK. Uh, the irony there, I think, is very, very strong. But that's where we are now, battling with high inflation, having to use contractionary monetary policy. Yes, contractionary monetary policy, mainly in the form of higher interest rates. Since December 2021, the Bank of England have been consistently raising interest rates, standing now at 4.25%. My view is that this figure will continue to rise in the coming months. And they've increased interest rates at high rates all throughout 2022, throughout 2023 as well, uh, very quickly at high rates. Um, very contractionary on that side, but also the Bank of England are using quantitative tightening. What is that? It's basically the reverse of quantitative easing. QE is an increase in a country's money supply. Quantitative easing is the reversal of that process to try and reduce the money supply. And both policies contractionary in nature. Why? For the core goal of reducing inflation. Battling very high, higher than target rates and stubbornly higher than target rates of inflation. Um, the, the irony is very strong again because we know the Bank of England really sowed the seeds for high inflation with massive QE. Notable that the UK, the Eurozone, the USA, countries that used heavy quantitative easing during the COVID crisis are seeing persistently, stubbornly higher than target rates of inflation, whereas other countries like in Southeast Asia who didn't use massive quantitative easing are not, su not seeing such worryingly high rates of inflation. So yeah, the Bank of England sowed the seeds for the high inflation that we're seeing at the moment, and now they're having to use contractionary monetary policy to try and battle it and bring it down. Are these policies working though? 
It's been well over a year since we've seen these policies in action, yet inflation continues to rise. And that's because we know at the moment, inflation is being driven by supply side drivers. In 2021, higher oil prices. Throughout 2022, higher gas, electricity prices. Throughout 2022 and 2023, higher food prices. We've also seen very high wage growth in the UK. All of these are supply side drivers. Higher interest rates target the demand side of the economy don't they? They don't reduce food prices or gas prices. So their effect has been very, very little. But the Bank of England, an organisation that is supposed to be looking after our inflation rate, maintaining it at the 2% target, has to be seen to be doing something. So they've been raising rates regardless. Um, but other goals also to reduce the amount of household debt. We know too much household debt is dangerous for households. And to encourage more saving, an important safety net in times of economic crisis, but also to promote a more sustainable growth path in the UK, to move away from a credit-fueled growth path, from borrowing-led consumption and investment, which is not sustainable, towards encouraging simply those who can afford to borrow and need to borrow to do so, and others to fund consumption from their savings instead. Much more organic, much more sustainable. But the trade-offs are noteworthy. Higher interest rates can shock the economy back into a recession. There are already concerns that contractionary monetary policies harming growth in the UK. We know this year our forecast growth rate is minus 0.2%. We are the only major economy to be using contractionary monetary and contractionary fiscal policy. And we're one of the only economies forecast to shrink this year that's advanced in nature. No coincidence, right? Not surprising. These are very contractionary demand side policies that we are using. But on the micro level, you can simply worry about the burden of higher interest rates on the indebted, in particular those with mortgages, uh, those with high credit card debt, those with high consumer debt generally. Can they afford to pay back these loans at higher interest? What if they can't? Do they go bankrupt? Do they lose their house? You can worry about living standards. Even if it's not that extreme and people can afford to pay back debts at higher interest, it's just another kind of hit on them at a time of a major cost of living crisis. The concern to living standards is a nice argument. You can worry about the risks of bank failure. We've seen this already, higher interest rates triggering a triggering SVB bank uh, going bust. We've seen it with Credit Suisse as well in trouble. Higher interest rates make it harder for banks to access liquidity, but also people can take their deposits out of banks, searching for higher yields in the economy. Uh, and also people struggle to pay back loans at higher interest and they default on their loans. You've got risk of bank failure there. So liquidity crisis and insolvency risks as a result of higher interest rates. And then just the horrible impact higher interest rates have on investment, a further discouragement for businesses to borrow and fund investment, bad news for short-term and long-term growth in the UK. So that, guys, covers the major monetary policy themes at the moment. Lots of context, lots of good stats for you to take in. This question does come up this year, sprinkling some of this context. These stats in your essay is going to make you look like a star, but also just help you to weigh up arguments that you write about in your essays. So take it all in. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. I can't wait to see you all in the next major fire video coming up soon.